Twilight Struggle Red Sea Conflict in the Horn of Africa has a digital app. This time I'm going to take the Russian side and see if I can pull off a win here on Legendary Tactics. The Russian side in this game has for some reason posed more of a challenge for me. I don't know why exactly. Um, it's the game is somewhat asymmetrical in the sense that the events are different but really there shouldn't be a, a big disparity um, anyway um, the uh, the cards uh, when you choose the Russian side and the American side the cards are always coming uh, from the left so it's a, a little bit uh, I, I, disconcerting I guess I don't know if that's too strong a word but um, I think it would be uh, visually better if uh, you had one side that was the US side one side that was the Russian side but but anyway here's a, a quick glance at my cards and I've got a decent hand um, not a lot of my events but not a lot of US events either um, sort of a lot of neutral events now the one the one wild card there is the Africa scoring card now obviously the the good news is I can try to steer things towards uh, that uh, result um, and uh, go for Africa uh, obviously with everything I got uh, but it's also that uh, dangerous possibility that if I don't take Africa or don't uh, take it well enough I guess you could say that uh, I'm going to be in trouble so um, the, the headline card took a, a little bit of, of time um, to think about um, I was thinking about either a potentially a neutral event um, but I ended up going with detente. Um, obviously, it would be nice if the U.S. lost some uh, some mill ops points uh, for uh, you know during that gameplay. But at the end of the day, I thought, well, you know what? This is kind of the best uh, Russian event right now. Um, the uh, the Madagascar event there is is really good as a counter to the uh, French connection card. Uh, and fortunately, the coup fails in Somalia. So uh, for my opponent, and I do uh, steal the Romanian autonomy card as well. So I think really it was about more about limiting uh, my opponent's options. Uh, there's no safety valve. So if they have some events of mine, then they're going to have to uh, have to uh, deal with them and, and not avoid them. So uh, I have a, a decent uh, coup in uh, Ethiopia. And that sets a sets the stage fairly nicely. Again, knowing full well I have to score Africa this turn. Um, obviously, we need to make sure that that happens. Um, it does degrade the Defcon to two, which I'm okay with um, at the moment. Certainly, it prevents counter cooing, um, but uh, the U.S. manages to get into both Sudan and Kenya. So now the question is, uh, <laughs> you know, which one? What do we do to, to counter this? Do we counter in Kenya? Do we counter in um, Sudan? And the big problem is that Ethiopia and Somalia are not connected. So I need a bridge either through Sudan or Kenya uh, to get to Somalia. And uh, it was a, a bit of a tough call. I mean, I could coup Sudan, certainly. Um, that was one option. Um, I don't remember exactly why, but I decided to go into Kenya. I think just giving up the battleground uh, potentially I wanted to make a run for Kenya and I figured Sudan was you know very unlikely to be reinforced by my opponent and yet uh, you know it's so it would be a coup target uh, at any given time now of course this meant that um, the AI did actually the very smart move of taking Egypt um, which I should have uh, I think in retrospect um, headed off so a coup in Sudan make sure that's under my control and then come into Somalia through that door instead um, so this left a little bit of uh, I was in a, a bit of a pickle I've got five cards left I do have a couple US events but I do have the Romanian autonomy card if need be um, so there was you know definitely some options and in that case that's exactly what I did I just played to get into Somalia and um, you know, and hopefully, I'm just kind of doing the math here. <laughs> At the moment, um, I believe Africa, Africa scoring is actually a winning 
card for me. Now the AI is going to react to this and plays the victorious leader. It's when I'm in my my games as a Russian player, I've come to really hate that card. It's really strong, um, but that's exactly why I kept this card in play it was to take back control of Madagascar. And now back again, I, I'm in winning position here with more countries controlled in Africa, or at least sorry, I'm I'm tied. I'm one I, I, I'm one coup in Sudan away from um, being ahead. Uh, sorry, in Africa. Sorry. Um, and then uh, the U.S. presidential elections, a very weak coup, and uh, it fails. So that's uh, that's fine. Um, good to see some weakness on my opponent's part. And now I'm going to have to try and coup in, uh, in Sudan and get back my majority. I ended up uh, checking just to see... Um, what the scoring was looking like there, but in the end I'm going to coup in Sudan and get a massive success, which is great. So that is locked down. Once again, I am in winning position with a few cards left. And one of the, thing, the great things about this game, even though it's short, there is a lot of tension there. You, it's very similar to Twilight Struggle in that you're really hoping, you, you know, the, the enemy doesn't counter and uh, my opponent has the Derg, which uh, does um, add to my uh, <laughs> does add to my stake in Ethiopia, but um, made a move, good move for Somalia actually there, um, and has got a, one more opportunity. And this is where I'm, you know, kind of waiting with bated breath to see what happens because I am in winning position. The Africa scoring card will win depending on how this goes, and no change. The realignment attempts fail. And uh, that is a winning play for me. So um, anyway, this is just one example of how uh, to win as a Russian player. I find it seems to me that Africa becomes much more contentious for the for the Russian player. The American has a little, a little more instinct to spread out into the Middle East as well. But anyway, hope this helped you and hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. This is Legendary Tactics.